I had friends, they were more impressed yeah. that I survived 20 years in the military yeah. than becoming a pilot, an able agent. Wow. Because they knew what I was like as a kid. Wow. Hey guys, Joy Villa here, and I'm here with a very special friend, my good friend. I know him as Nacho, and for Veterans Voices, we're celebrating voices of veterans who've served for our country. But Nacho, can you introduce yourself to the audience, your proper introduction? I am retired Lieutenant Commander John David Castillo, United States Navy. Uh, to, to some people, I'm just John. Uh, mm -hmm. To others, like Joy, uh, Nacho, which is a call sign slash nickname. Uh, that you get when you're in uh, aviation. Why did you choose particularly the Navy? The summer of 1986, Top Gun came out, which is oh yes, still Space. considered the best Navy recruiting Ooh. video of all time. Is it really? You know, with all due respect to uh, the Air Force, a lot of people can land on a five, six thousand, seven thousand foot runway, but to land on a small little postage stamp out in the middle of nowhere, that you know, I wanted the challenge. What was the reaction when you said, I'm going to join the Navy? Well, my parents were, they were excited. They thought, because they, they didn't know that my childhood dream could still be achieved because I was a little older when I finally went back to school. How were you as a kid? Were you really rebellious? Oh yeah, I was, I was, I was, I, I made my parents earn their stripes. I guess if I had grown up in today's time, I'd probably, be, would have been heavily medicated. They tried oh. to medicate me as a child. My mother refused. Good. And, but, you know, when I was a young kid, I, it was hard for me to focus. I wasn't great yeah. at school. I got into fights uh, for various different reasons. Some were my own fault. Yeah. Others were really the other kid's fault. But I don't, I, you know, I don't, I don't blame anything or anybody. Uh, you know, the color of my skin, my last name going into a an all-white school mm. and be bad no because i controlled me there's nothing that i can't overcome or how i believe that i can overcome wow that's an incredible mindset that philosophy in life you saying i take responsibility for what i do in my life i mean that that makes a successful military man that makes a successful human being everything everything that i did was hard but it was it was welcomed even the mystery of not knowing like the moving that we would have to go all the places we have to move to even that's scary yeah. right after 20 years in the navy retiring from that life now having a different sort of adjustment how is it being a civilian it's 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 weird it's, we were, the wife and I were driving on base uh, about two weeks ago. We went to the Pensacola Lighthouse. I went through the gate. I showed them my, my retirement ID. They still salute you. I saluted back in, in, in civilian clothes. And yeah, she says, uh, so how does it, how does it feel to be back? And yeah. I said, I didn't like it. I didn't like it because, you didn't like it. Wow. Because it wasn't. I didn't belong anymore. I, it was something I used to do. It's not something that I still did. So uh, that feeling that I wasn't a part of it anymore. And I know there's a lot of veterans out there that struggle with that. Uh, mm. And if that's all that they had, and then some of them may not have a family. Right. They're married, divorced, or the kids are now grown and gone, and they come back and they're like, what do I do now? At least the right. three little kids keep me very busy. Yeah. So, and it feels like it was a dream. Wow. Like, a different life, but in a way, Joy, it was a dream because I achieved my childhood dream. You were at my retirement ceremony. I kind of talked yeah. about the story a little bit. Yeah, that was an incredible ceremony, by the way. I'm so honored to have sang the national anthem. And I'm so, I was like, I was crying. It was so beautiful. There was so much ceremony to that ceremony. It was beautiful. To serve this country is, as was and still is a great honor because just mm -hmm. so you know, I never uh, reneged on my vow uh, mm. to support the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and especially domestic. I never said, okay, I don't, uh, you know, I put up my yeah. hand and I still swore that oath and that oh. went with me to the day I die. We do it at a potential big sacrifice. Right. That, 
that, that's where we get all those benefits because something bad could happen. Thank God. And if something bad happens, it's not like on the outside with, with me, you know, something bad happens. It's like thinking, okay, maybe, I don't know. You know, it's good. It's a way less thing. Something bad yeah. happens over there. You could lose your life. Correct. Your family loses their father, their husband, you know, Correct. lose the husband. And it's, you give your all. If, if your commander says you got to go out there, you got to do it. Oh, Even was, knowing that you may not come back. And I've been, I've been very fortunate and lucky. It's, there's no, yeah. I can't think, get any other word other than lucky. It's wonderful. Yeah, you are. And that's, I love it. Nacho, thank you so much. This has been an incredible interview. I, I got to learn a lot more about you as a friend and, and as a military man who I respect for your service. And thank you so much for sacrificing, for serving, for retiring from the Navy. You didn't just do a couple, you know, stints, which is absolutely amazing, but you dedicated your life 20 years of service. And, you know, I am appreciative and many Americans need to hear veterans' voices more. So I appreciate you doing that. Well, it was my pleasure.